Welcome, my reviewers, to the presentation of my internship project, uh, Digital Formative Assessments in the 10th Grade. So a little bit about me. My name is Michelle Baskin, and I'm finishing up my Master's of Education in Educational Technology at Loyola University. I currently teach at Duke Ellington School of the Arts, which is where my internship was based, and I am the Science Department Chair and 10th Grade Team Lead. I've been at Ellington for nine years, 14 years teaching in general, and this uh, internship was really based on this 10th grade team that I work with. So a little bit of background before I jump into the project. Duke Ellington uh, has been in a building from the late 1800s since its inception in the, um, about 40 years ago. And in that original building, we had very little technology infrastructure that allowed us to actually include technology into our daily instruction. So we underwent a remodel and this current school year is our second year in this space. And we went from having almost no infrastructure to having really state-of-the-art technology infrastructure, integrated smart boards and projectors in teaching spaces, art and academic, as well as Wi-Fi routed throughout the building and eight laptop carts with 30 laptops each for about 240 laptops for about 580 students. So it was a big increase for us. And a major concern with both the teaching faculty and our administration is we have all of this technology, but do we know how to use it? So there's always that fear of use it or lose it. And if we're not going to use it effectively, then we run the risk of having the school district not support us moving forward when we want to try new things or when we need repairs to existing infrastructure. So my internship project was based on my 10th grade PLC community, which consisted of nine teachers, myself included, one world language teacher who was new to the building, two English teachers, one who was returning, one new to the building, two math teachers, one new, one returning, two science teachers, myself included, and two returning history teachers. None of these teachers were brand new to teaching, and they range anywhere from within their first couple of years to 15 plus years of teaching. And they really did run the full range of technology, both comfort as well as willingness to try new things. So since I had these new teachers, I did need to spend the fall prior to my internship, getting to know them, see what they were willing to try, and what support I felt like they were going to need going forward. So as I said at the outset, my project was based around formative assessment. And so in the fall, I was able to spend some time before the internship started to kind of see what everybody thought of about formative assessments to make sure we had a common language in which to move forward. And in general, people voiced a lot of paper-based items, exit tickets, um, you know, warm-up slips, walking around with a clipboard and seeing what student did, um, a lot of informal non-hard data collected items and none of us really discussed anything about reteaching using that information. It was very much based on gut. So this kind of gave us a common language of saying well we want to move beyond where this is and I kind of laid that out starting in November and December and one of the ways I did that was by sharing hey like you are currently right now using this thing called Padlet that you've never used before and everybody played around with it we commented on each other's things and added stars and upvotes and all sorts of stuff um, to get familiar with it and to build excitement around trying new things. So my actual internship proposal was formally submitted in January and approved in February. And the goal was that we need to leverage the technology that we currently have in ways that actually influence instruction and improve student learning. So the ultimate goal is not just to try new things, but to try new things in high impact ways to improve student learning. The ultimate goal is to change the way you deliver instruction. So by building in this kind of idea where we're this pilot group of teachers and we can, we're gonna get to try new things that nobody else does and we're gonna get to see what works, that this created a lot of excitement around the program within the PLC and this allowed us to be able to move forward to try and 
actually change the way we delivered instructions. So the ultimate goal here is this last statement. We can use digital formative assessments to monitor student learning and learn about new technology platforms at the same time so that we can more fully integrate those in the future. We had a constant eye out that our ultimate goal was to take these outside of our 10th grade PLC to ultimately teach our peers within our departments to be able to leverage those in the best way. So I had four learning objectives. The first one was simply to create a resource website for everybody to be able to use both now as well as in the future with future professional development across all the academic teachers. And then I was going to deliver two small group professional developments embedded within our PLC time that would share all of the different platforms that we decide we were gonna use. And then based on my teachers, the teachers were each going to create at least three digital formative assessments, ideally using the same platform. That way they could kind of become mini experts at a single platform and it would be able to um, leverage their expertise with future teachers. And then lastly, the final goal was to have everybody create at least one reteaching lesson based on the data from their formative assessment. So we ended up focusing on four platforms. So the first one here is GoFormative. So this is what I did using this map. And this map here, we were able to take an image and turn an image into a formative assessment, which was right out the gate a very different way for most of our teachers to think about formative assessments. So my history teachers immediately jumped on this and said, wow, so this is something that we can do that takes much less time that can give rapid feedback because I can use the same map and ask all sorts of different questions. Then the next platform I introduced was Socrative. And I really liked Socrative, even though it was not as popular with the other teachers, but I liked it for this reason right here. So Socrative allows you to embed explanations as part of the answer process. So you get to embed your reteaching within the question and uh, formative assessment process. So I thought that was a really high leverage option. Uh, the next thing that was introduced was quizzes. And once my teachers learned about quizzes, they were like, Socrative, Socrative is out the window because quizzes, it's more game-based um, for the students. And it was much easier for them to set up because you could borrow quizzes that other people had generated and make a copy of it, edit it, and use it for yourself. So this was really popular um, with all of the teachers and ultimately the students as well because you could do a live game within the class and then after identifying students who needed reteaching, you could send home specific students with reteaching materials or have them come at lunch and then assign a different quizzes or even the same one as homework and then see if they showed improvement in student learning. So that's one of the things that made this, this platform really, really powerful. And then there was poor Flipgrid, which we never got time to actually use. So we started running out of meeting time, uh, meetings getting canceled in uh, the month of March and April. So we didn't get to Flipgrid. But since I had explained what it was, my math and my foreign language teachers are very excited about trying out Flipgrid at the end of this school year because it really focuses students on explaining what they know. And that is a powerful way to be able to um, formatively assess your so I wanted to take a minute to go into two platforms that my student or that my teachers really really liked quizzes first and then go formative so quizzes um, some of the teachers were familiar with Kahoot and quizzes is a similar platform but in many ways it's a little bit more powerful because you have more control as a teacher but the nice thing about quizzes is being able to search for pre-made quizzes that already exist so my ap world history teacher automatically found a bunch of review quizzes based on learning objectives that he started assigning almost immediately math teachers able to find common core aligned uh 
quick multiple choice questions that they could use on their park Mondays for test prep. Um, my science teacher, as you can see here in the email, she immediately jumped on quizzes and just fell in love with it. She started using it in all of her classes, all three of her course preps extensively. She was using it in class. She was using it as homework. She was challenging students to take a quiz and then spend time by themselves or working in small groups to figure out what they didn't know, what were they getting wrong, what did they need to do better, and then trying to beat their previous score by at least 10 points. So quizzes, very, very popular with um, the teachers that we tried in the 10th grade. Go formative was also popular, but really intimidating because there's so much flexibility in, in go formative. You can do multiple choice questions. You can do short answer. You can do essays. You can do things based on images. You can do things based on text. You can type in questions. So this multitude of question format is amazing and is really great. Um, and our special ed teacher, when he sat in on one of our meetings, he immediately realized that he could help uh, students track their IEP goals by using some of these special question formats that GoFormative has. The difficulty is it takes a little bit of time to figure out how to use. So while GoFormative was popular, it's a little bit more daunting and we're going to need to spend some more time here. One of my brave souls actually did decide to take a deeper dive with GoFormative, um, and it was kind of by chance. So he and I ran into each other in the copy room one day, and he was copying all of these primary source documents for this essay assignment um, that the district wanted the 10th grade students to do. And he was really struggling, thinking that the students just didn't know where to start on this assignment. And as we were talking, we decided that it might be possible to get the students going using GoFormative. So we looked on the district website, we found an exemplar essay. Well, an exemplar essay was something that we could use. So we cut and paste the introductory paragraph, we used the best practices that we had developed in our professional development session, we triple spaced it, we used highlighting and underlining to identify key portions of the paragraph, we embedded questions from simple vocabulary questions to point of view questions to the ultimate question asking students to rewrite the thesis statement from an alternative point of view. And then this led to a discussion at the end of class saying, well, of all these primary source documents, which ones would you expect to find in the rest of this essay? And after that experience, student had a much better idea of what they needed to find to write their essay from the point of view that they had selected. So this was a really powerful thing, but this teacher required a lot of one-on-one -on -one work to be able to make this happen, which is not a problem, but it's not something that I properly anticipated needing to do at the outset of the internship. So ultimately, I created this formative assessment resource website that can be a continuing living document that will live on beyond this internship process. And I anticipate that we will add to it as we continue to work with the other platforms, especially Flipgrid at the end of this year. And it's embedded with a Google Doc on the front page that is live. And it's much easier to update a Google Doc than the actual full website. All of the sub pages use the information from all those platform help pages so that they will update themselves on their own. And then after a little bit of tweaking at the end of this year, we now have a resource website that we're ready to share with the full staff at the beginning of the school year next year for any teacher who is ready um, to try some new things in their classroom. So this is a great resource that we create. At the end of the survey process, right before, or uh, internship process, right before spring break, I gave a survey to both teachers and to students. So from students, I wanted to know which platforms did you really like using? And not too surprisingly, the students really liked the game-based platforms. So some teachers had already been using Kahoot, um, and they tried quizzes instead, and you found that more and more students were liking quizzes. Some of them liked the music better, but they did like that there was a game-based option. Teachers didn't really have too much of a preference one way or another because the teachers understood that the content and what kinds of questions you were trying to ask really dictated which platform you used. So the main information I was able to gather from my survey is that 
problems implementing this new technology fell into basically two categories. You either had hardware issues or you had time issues. And for the hardware issues, this is an area where I need to work with my school's administration in terms of properly scheduling and accounting for the laptops we have available to make sure we have fair and equitable access to them. And then the time issues was really kind of a function of the fact that the internship fell in this period uh, right before our fall or our February break um, between that time period and our spring break um, after everybody already had the flow of their classes going. So it's not that people were against being able to do any of this work. They overall reported very positive experience and they wanted to continue moving forward, but they want more time to be able to implement these things well. So looking back, I would say that time was my number one frustration, but also something that I don't really have any control over. It wasn't so much as a roadblock as it just kind of slowed the process down. So I realize now that a couple of things that I should have been able to do is I should have embedded discussion about reteaching when we went over platforms to begin with and looked at the way that student data was reported back to us. And if I had done that, I might have gotten more teachers um, meeting my, helping me meet my fourth objective by implementing reteaching lessons. And secondly, after those original professional developments where I introduced the platforms, if I had taken that brainstorming information that we had gathered and immediately created a screencast where I showed my individual teachers how to create accounts and how to get started and reported back to them the brainstorming that we had just discussed, I think I would have had not better buy-in because I had good buy-in, but I think I would have had more teachers trying things out sooner instead of needing to follow up with teachers one-on-one -on -one to actually get them started. So moving forward, the best thing about this is my teachers want to try new things. Everybody was 100% positive and willing to try new things. And this is the thing we need to build off of. So we've already decided that after this testing period of park testing and AP testing finishes in May, that we're going to come together and meet again, go back over the platforms we tried, we're going to take a look at Flipgrid, the platform we didn't try, and we're going to decide how we want to move forward. Which platforms do we want to continue to try and use next year? And how can we best leverage those platforms to improve our instruction and then adequately plan for it over the summer? With some teachers, I might end up meeting one-on-one -on -one with them, but with others, they might just need this refresher and then they know that they have the tools to be able to use it on their own. Moving forward, there's a chance that the 10th grade team may want to incorporate Google Classroom into um, the full uh, all 10th grade teachers because some of these platforms integrate seamlessly with Google Classroom in ways that we might be able to leverage them even better. And then finally, we're all uh, gearing up towards providing professional development at the beginning of the next school year to all of the academic and arts teachers to see if anybody across all levels wants to use some of these platforms because we have a little host of mini experts who are ready to help out in very targeted ways with how do I set up a quizzes or what's the best practice for how I need to do my spacing on a on a go formative. So this is possible both through formal professional development at the beginning of the year, as well as a bleed over effect between um, teachers in their core departments, which was again, part of the reason that we focus this on the 10th grade level, where we combine all of these content teachers. So that's my internship in a nutshell. And I thank you for watching and I look forward to your feedback.